Meanwhile, former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio is set to be sentenced today for his role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Prosecutors are asking for more than 30 years in prison, the longest for any January 6th defendant so far. Let's bring in senior reporter Catherine Falders, along with ABC News contributor, attorney, and former FBI agent Asha Rangappa for more. Catherine, why are prosecutors trying to get such a long sentence in this case? Right, this is the highest sentence that they have suggested so far of 33 years, so it can possibly ultimately be the longest sentence. So far, the longest sentence here is for the Oath Keepers leader, which is 18 years long, so we'll have to see ultimately what the judge does here. But what the government says in their, pro in their sentencing memo is they essentially say this far-right group, quote, intentionally positioned themselves at the vanguard of political violence in this country. They say that it was the conspiracy uh, led by Tario, the group's leader, even though he wasn't physically at the Capitol on January 6th, that led to the majority of the violence at the Capitol. So we'll have to see ultimately uh, what happens during the sentencing this afternoon, but it is the longest sentence that prosecutors have suggested so far, so could likely end up being uh, the longest sentence uh, handed down by a judge. Asha, what kind of factors is the judge considering uh, when looking at a sentence like this? Well, the judge is going to be looking at a number of factors, uh, the history of the defendant, the role they played. Uh, Tario was a leader in this. And there's a very important component that the judge will be considering, which is a terrorism sentencing enhancement. And this is whether the defendant's conduct was attempting to influence the government using coercion or intimidation. And what's notable is that the government has been asking for this enhancement in the context of these Proud Boys uh, sentencing um, hearings. And it's a unique context because this isn't a situation where buildings blew up or, you know, international terrorism where it's normally been used. Um, and the judge so far has actually added that enhancement to the other defendants. So I think it's likely that it will happen here. Um, and it's especially notable for the government, given that this is essentially they're treating it as a domestic terrorism case. Asha, Tario was one of the main targets of the Justice Department's investigation. So how significant is this moment for him to be sentenced? This entire prosecution, along with the Oath Keepers, I think is a huge win for the Department of Justice. Um, we need to remember that seditious conspiracy is the closest crime we pretty much have to treason. It's an incredibly serious crime, and it's therefore rarely prosecuted by the Justice Department because it's a political crime. You don't want to you know, charge everyone under the sun. So they've been very selective. And in the past, they haven't been successful with these. Um, you know, they tried this on uh, a white nationalist group in the 80s, and the defendants were acquitted. A judge in 2010 threw it out against a Christian nationalist group the Justice Department tried to prosecute. So the fact that they have won convictions on seditious conspiracy, that they're getting pretty high sentences, even though it's not what they're asking for, I think sends a huge signal about the importance of uh, vindicating the harm that was caused on January 6th and that they will pursue it to the fullest extent of the law. Uh, Catherine, meanwhile, the contempt trial for former Trump advisor Peter Navarro is getting underway today. He's accused of defying a subpoena from the House January 6th committee. So what can we expect there? Right, it's getting underway, and I think what we could expect today is just jury selection. So Peter Navarro is here. We saw him come into court earlier today. Uh, this is the jury selection phase. So again, uh, to remind our viewers, since this has been quite some time ago, uh, the January 6th committee on Capitol Hill obviously subpoenaed Peter Navarro for documents and testimony, and he didn't comply at all, which led uh, the Justice Department to charge him on two counts uh, of contempt of Congress, of defying that subpoena. So this trial is getting underway. Jury selection today. We could hear opening arguments likely later this week. All right, Catherine Falders, Asha Rangappa, thank you both. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.